I am uh, Dr. V. R. Pandita. I am uh, being given this opportunity to talk about hypertension with you today. I am a consultant physician at uh, at District Hospital in uh, JNK, and uh, I have been uh, practicing for the past about thirty years. Uh, I, ha ha I have an uh, outpatient as well as an inpatient practice, and. Uh, uh, many people who are uh, associated with me. I see a lot of people with uh, cardiovascular diseases, hypertension, and all sorts of problems. So today we are uh, going to talk about hypertension. And uh, uh, because it's a very common problem, hypertension, nowadays almost everybody has hypertension. When we started many years ago, Hypertension was a problem with the older people. And uh, uh, the population affected was small. And uh, the medicines, drugs that were available at that time were few in number. But uh, with the, the progressive increase in uh, lifespan, the increased availability of food, the change in life habits, the sedentary lifestyle, the stressful uh, lives that people lead nowadays. A lot of people are nowadays suffering from hypertension. Uh, or you may see many of your colleagues who are not in that age bracket, but still they have got problems with their blood pressure and uh, they are juggling some uh, medicines or some other advice. Uh, they are trying to manage their blood pressure some way or the other. So hypertension is an important public health problem and is the number one risk factor for cardiovascular diseases, stroke, kidney failure, and uh, retinopathies in the eyes. So the, uh, you can say that it's, uh, a lot of target organs are being damaged by hypertension and most of the time the person who suffers from hypertension does not know it because hypertension does not cause any particular signs and symptoms which should tell a person that I have got hypertension. So most of the people who are suffering from hypertension, but they have a familiar history also, their uh, other parents are also hypertensive, and uh, often when they come to a doctor for a routine checkup, the doctor tells them that you are hypertensive or they suffer something like a heart attack, or a stroke or something else happens to them. And during investigation, it's found that the person is hypertensive as it suffered already damage to the heart in form of left ventricular hypertrophy, dilatation of the heart. The kidneys have become weak. They are no longer working so efficiently as they would do. And the person suddenly is labeled hypertensive. So what is this hypertension about? That's what we are going to talk about. Uh, hypertension is, as you know, that the blood that's pumped by the heart in the systolic phase, that's when the heart contracts. This blood exerts a force against the walls of the blood vessels through which it passes. The large parts pa passages are the aorta and the systemic arteries. And this pressure that is exerted is known as blood pressure. Normally in people who are not hypertensive, this blood pressure stays around 120 by 80 millimeters mercury when it's recorded with a recording instrument known as a sphygmomanometer. But in hypertensive people, this blood pressure starts pushing itself up and often the person who uh, does not know about it and his blood pressure has these say very high levels. You see that when a patient comes in the office and well, he is all right. He is just there for some other illness, and we find very high blood pressure, say 160 by 110, and the person is not aware of it. So, because the person is not aware of it, often the person thinks that there is nothing wrong with him. The doctor is inappropriately labeling him as diseased, and he does not uh, continue or follow the prescription or uh, the medicines that he is supposed to take. And with the result that in the long run, he suffers damage to the vasculature, the endothelium of the blood vessels, there is atheros accelerated atherosclerosis, there are heart attacks, there are problems with stroke, there are problems with the kidney, and 
hypertension is an important contributor to the uh, diabetic nephropathy epidemic that we are seeing at present all over the world and especially in India here. So once we, we a person who has got concerns about hypertension, once he visits the doctor, the doctor takes his blood pressure. So the blood pressure is taken in the arm, generally the right or the left arm, one of the two arms, or in both the arms, it may, be need, it may need to be taken. The person should not have taken uh, coffee or smoked uh, cigarettes, etc. He should rest for five or 10 minutes before getting his blood pressure checked. He should be reclining in a chair uh, in a relaxed state, and uh, the person's arm, that's the brachium, this part of the arm is known as the brachium. So this part where the cuff is applied like this, this should be at the level of the heart, okay? So in addition to that, this uh, blood pressure, once it's recorded in one arm, the, person, the doctor who does this recording or the health care worker who does this recording inflates the cuff progressively to high levels and then slowly deflates it and listens to the sounds, what are known as cortical sounds. When they become first available to once they become first audible to the uh, person who is checking the blood pressure, this is known as the systolic blood pressure. And it's the pressure that the heart is exerting when it is contracting against these blood vessels, pushing the blood in these blood vessels. And then when he further deflates, he hears the second heart sound, which is second uh, cord cop sound, that's from the diastolic blood pressure. So this systolic and diastolic blood pressure are the two pressures, which is our, uh, represent the pressure that the heart is exerting during systole, that's the contraction, and during diastole, that's the relaxation phase. And this blood pressure is very important. When we, for example, do any activities, say we have to do some physical activity, or there is some physical or mental stress, the blood pressure automatically rises, because this is one way that we get that blood pressure to do those activities. When a person is, uh, say, uh, he's climbing a block of stairs or he's running a marathon, his blood pressure has to increase so that he can perform that particular work. But once that activity is over, the blood pressure again reaches the, those basal levels that are pre-existent in this person. However, if this blood pressure uh, in addition, this blood pressure shows a diurnal uh, variation. When we sleep, we are reclining and all the body is at a, in a state of a rest. We, our blood pressure is low, it falls. So during the night hours, it is very low. When we get up in the morning, getting up, assuming the vertical position from the lying down position, uh, so there is a stress. We have to get up against the gravity a lot of catecholamine hormones are secreted in the body and this causes increase in the blood pressure. So when we get up, the blood pressure immediately shoots up. And during the day, it also does not remain at the same level, but according to the degree of physical act activity or the mental stress that we have, it keeps on varying. So uh, this diurnal variation of blood pressure is also an important part of blood pressure and money uh, people feel that when this diurnal variability of blood pressure is lost, this is associated with more illnesses. So once a person is consistently having blood pressures greater than 140 by 90, so this uh, blood pressure is going to cause damage to the target organs. The blood uh, pressure is a stress upon this heart and this heart has to pump more forcefully to push this. And so what happens that the muscle of the heart increases in its thickness, which is known as left ventricular hypertrophy. Later on in the course, once the uh, left ventricle or the heart is not able to cope with the blood pressure, it starts dilating and it starts failing. In addition, the kidneys or other vascular beds exposed to this uh, high blood pressure undergo progressive changes, atherosclerotic, changes, there is damage to the uh, vessel, blood vessels and uh, the small capillary beds, etc. present in our retina, that's the eyes. And in addition to that, in the kidneys, this causes damage to them. 
It accelerates the atherosclerosis, which is a deposition of the cholesterol, the bad cholesterol in the oxidized cholesterol, LDL, in the walls of our blood vessels. And this is a process which starts very early in life, but diseases like hypertension, diabetes, extra, accelerate this process of atherosclerosis and cause problems like uh, cardiovascular disease, what's known as ischemic cardiovascular disease, strokes can happen, Paralysis can occur, the eyes can lose their uh, sight, retinopathy, or the kidneys can undergo nephropathy, They're, they will no longer be functioning in a proper manner. So, in addition to this, there is damage to the arteries of the limbs, what's now the peripheral vascular disease, which also increases once hypertension is present. So, once a person is seen by the doctor and he records a high recording, we try to find out whether there is any cause for concern. Is the person's blood pressure so high that there is a danger of immediate injury to the organs of the body? What are known as hypertensive emergencies or urgencies? Is there a problem? Is there the headache? Is there a blood pressure very high, which needs to be immediately decreased? Say a person who has a one blood pressure above 160 by 110, this would be concerning for us. We would like to keep this person under observation and try to decrease it by a few millimeters mercury to prevent some acute emergency from happening. But generally, once we record high blood pressure, say a person who comes, a young person, male, with a blood pressure of 150 by 100, and I examine him, I don't find anything significant. Uh, then I would like to uh, ask him to revisit me in a few days. And once uh, we see, I, uh, I would see him again in three or four days, I would like to confirm the blood pressure. So I would take the blood pressure reading again in both of his arms and go with the higher blood pressure. And if I felt that if this person is hypertensive, so the, what's the first thing to do? We have to inform the person. We have to tell him that you are hypertensive. And what are the risk factors for your blood pressure. So I would like to tell the person that what kind of diet are you taking? What kind of physical activities do you have? Are you having a sedentary lifestyle? What's your food intake? What's your sodium intake? What calories, how many calories are you taking daily? And what kind of calories are they? Are you taking fast foods which are rich in uh, calories and rich in sodium, which are going and uh, bad cholesterol, uh, fats, etc., which are going to cause you problems. Uh, we would like to counsel this person, first of all, with regard to the lifestyle. So what would we tell the person? We would tell the person that you need to decrease your salt intake. You, uh, what, what's a, a teaspoon is a five grams of salt. You need to bring it to lesser than that, say four grams in a, in a day, because we need to educate this person also that the natural foods that we take, vegetables, etc., they al already have some salt present in them. So adding extra salt should not should be discouraged. Then we would like to ask these people to take lesser cal calories, not large amounts of food, uh, which would be, uh, we would ask these people to lose weight, in fact, because weight loss is associated with a decrease, significant decrease in the blood pressure of this person. In addition, we would ask these people to stop the sedentary lifestyle. We would ask them to take regular exercise, say 40 minutes to one hour daily exercise most of the days of the week, so which would again help the person to decrease body weight and uh, the, uh, have a beneficial effect on the blood pressure. We would like to know the family history. Is a premature cardiovascular or atherosclerotic disease present in the parents? Are the parents hypertensive? Then the, we, uh, the parents are hypertensive. There is a significant likelihood that this person is also going to develop hypertension in the long run and will need some measures. Well, intake of a uh, diet which is rich in uh, fruits, milk, green leafy vegetables would be a very important thing which would help to decrease the blood pressure a few millimeters mercury further. And on the other end, intake of red meat organ meats, fats, saturated fats, extra, would be, would be discouraging the intake of all these kinds of foods in this person. 
uh, apart from sodium, the other salt, that's the potassium salt, if uh, there is a regular intake of, small intake of this potassium, this has again been shown to have a beneficial effect upon the blood pressure. So what would be a diet that would contain uh, green leafy vegetables, which would contain some milk, which would contain some amount of fruits. These fruits, fruits would give some amount of uh, uh, potassium also to this person and would uh, help in managing their blood pressure. In addition to the, this uh, regular intake of milk, which is calcium, which contains calcium, some intake of calcium regularly is beneficial in that it helps also to decrease the blood pressure by a few millimeters milk. So normally if this amount of advice, the patient is uh, given this amount of advice regarding his lifestyle modification. And if he is able to adopt these things, he needs to be motivated to keep on doing these things over several months and needs further observation. If our several months, we feel that this person is not uh, able to uh, obey this advice or is not able to uh, take uh, uh, good care of his health uh, the way he should be taking. Uh, because nowadays, most of the people are leading stressful lives. They have to work late hours in their offices and they don't do any exercise. They just want to take some food quickly, fast food, etc., and go to sleep and prepare for the next day. So often we find that people are not able to, for some reason, psychological reasons or workplace reasons, they are not able to follow this advice regarding uh, the diet modification, lifestyle modification, active lifestyle, etc. So such patients would be eligible for drug therapies. So uh, drug therapies, as you know, many classes of drugs are nowadays available. Say there are uh, beta blockers, there are ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, diuretics, calcium channel inhibitors, etc. A large number of drugs are nowadays available for controlling blood pressure. And some of them have been proven to have many other benefits besides uh, control of blood pressure. They have been found to have anti-atherosclerotic benefits. They have, been found, found, they have been found to have heart protection benefits, kidney protection benefits. So depending upon the individual situation, and the individual concerns of the person, uh, what is uh, bothering the person, according to that, we can tailor the therapy to uh, particular needs of this person. So generally, uh, people have to be, uh, once they initiate medicines, they do it for a few days, then they come back, they say that they are now all right, they have stopped taking food, extra. they want to stop the medicines. For some reason, uh, uh, it's a psychological barrier to the intake of medicines in most of the people. They can tolerate high blood pressures, but they would not like to take a tablet which would take care of their health. So we have to educate these people regarding what is happening inside them each moment when while their blood pressure is high. What is happening to the kidneys? What is happening to their blood vessels? What is happening to the retina? What is happening to the heart? We have to educate these people and uh, extol the benefits of control of blood pressure, whether by uh, natural means or by medicines or drugs, what, which are, we are going to use. Generally, hypertension, as I, I already touched, we, once we, a person comes to us, he often does not have symptoms. His physical examination may be normal, Apart from the raised blood pressure, he may, his investigations may also be normal. There may be nothing such much in his investigations uh, once he is investigated. So often the person feels that the blood pressure is there, but it is not causing him any damage. Or uh, these tests are all right, but his, he may have blood pressure, but his tests are all right. He says that, okay, I have taken some uh, uh, chips in the morning and that's why my blood pressure is elevated. Uh, it's not generally elevated like that. So most of the people do not accept this diagnosis of hypertension or once even if they accept it, but they are not compliant with treatment. So education is the most important thing that can be imparted to these people and they need to be motivated to take better care of their health and uh, to uh, do all those things which should, they should be doing and on the other hand, stop the sedentary lifestyle, the stressful lifestyle. Uh, nowadays, uh, uh, people are 
uh, doing yoga, for example, uh, to decrease the stress. Meditation techniques are nowadays being uh, done by people to decrease the mental stress that they have. And all these things can positively impact uh, blood pressure uh, for uh, 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 the common people. So uh, once a person's blood pressure is very high, say it's greater than 180 by 110, he is in a state of hypertensive emergency or hypertensive urgency, and his blood pressure needs to be brought down uh, in a quicker fashion. So these patients may need admission and observation in hospital for short term. They would need a, a, a ECG, uh, that's an electrocardiogram. They would need kidney function tests, CBC, extra, which would tell us is everything okay inside them or are they uh, having some problem. For example, such high blood pressures may be associated with development of heart attacks or strokes, paralyzed, paralytic attacks of the body, and uh, the, the, or they may be associated with dysfunction of the kidneys. So uh, uh, once we have to rule out the, all these things, we have to treat them by certain intravenously administered medicines, to decrease the blood pressure by about 5, 10 or 20 millimeters mercury. And say so it's again in a safe range so that the patient can go home, take medicines and come back to us after some time. Nowadays, we have uh, combinations also available. There are diuretic combinations with beta blockers, with uh, AR ARBs or ACE inhibitors, or even triple drug combinations are also available. One important concern in the patient who is hypertensive, we have to rule out what are known as secondary hypertension. Secondary hypertension is uh, an entity that is different from what is the common hypertension that's known as essential hypertension. Essential hypertension is multifactorial, probably genes contribute to it, probably uh, lifestyle contributes to it, many other factors contribute to it. There is no single factor for this, but there are about, uh, three to 4% people who may have a particular cause for their hypertension. They may be having an endocrine cause or a renal cause, especially kidneys. There may be renal artery cytosis. There may be phleochromocytomas. There may be adrenal masses, which are causing secondary hypertension. There may be chronic kidney disease itself, say chronic glomerulonephritis, et cetera, which is causing hypertension. So. An investigation of the person who is uh, being uh, looked after for, uh, by the doctor uh, for hypertension, investigation into his kidney function tests, his uh, uh, ultrasound of the kidneys, adrenals, and uh, sometimes we need some particular studies like uh, CT scans or Doppler studies of the renal arteries, CT scans of the abdomen to rule out or uh, masses in the adrenal glands extra, which may have, which are treatable because there is a single cause for these. So once that cause is taken care of, suppose there is a pheochromocytoma, there is a, that's a tumor of the adrenal gland. Once the, this is removed by surgery, the patient's blood pressure can revert back to normal. Similarly, treatment of renal artery stenosis where it's indicated surgical treatment, this may also cause significant improvement in the hypertension of this person. So uh, once, but generally those people who have essential hypertension, they go on, they go on keeping, uh, having, keep having this hypertension and they need continuous lifelong medicines. And once they stop medicines, once they feel they are all right, their blood pressure slowly again reaches back to the previous level. So we have to educate these people that there is no single cure for hypertension, that it is a lifelong disease and that these people are going to need a uh, lifelong treatment for uh, their problem. Nowadays, one particular new form of treatment that is being tried in Europe is what's uh, renal artery denervation is being tried to endo uh, vascular measures. They are trying to denervate the renal arteries, uh, the, the catecholamine uh, supplying nerves that go to the kidneys, they are trying to denervate them and they are trying to use this as a therapy to control hypertension or eliminate the need for drugs altogether. At present, there are good uh, encouraging results with this, 
but uh, it is yet to become a mainstream therapy for hypertension. So this is what I wanted to say about hypertension today. Uh, I, would, I would like to uh, uh, know whether there is anybody who has some questions that they would like to ask me.